It is very important that we see development as a human development. It's not that we should have tall buildings. It's not that we should have only nice roads on which we can travel. It is above all that we develop the human beings. And if we are going to develop human beings, it is logical that we see development as starting with what we do with the children as they are born. It is through vaccines that we have been able to protect the health of the child. In 1980, only one-fifth of the world's children had been vaccinated. Today, 80% of children are vaccinated by their first birthday. It has long been shown that vaccines are a very important tool in fighting infectious diseases because they not only protect the child immunized, they break the transmission cycle. The World Health Organization estimates that routine immunizations have saved more than 20 million lives over the past two decades. Immunization really is sometimes described as the backbone of health services. It's a source of access for women. Women bring their children in to be immunized, and then it's a point where they themselves can also receive health care, health advice, advice about family planning, etc. As one of the most important and cost-effective tools to increase child survival, vaccines are a best buy in global health. In 2011, the international community reaffirmed its commitment to vaccines, pledging an impressive $4.3 billion through 2015. The importance of these commitments can be seen in Zambia, a country with high rates of maternal and child mortality that illustrates the opportunities and the challenges of immunization in developing countries. I'm a parent, many people are parents. We've all had the experience of seeing your child get that shot in the arm. There's a long chain leading up to that shot in the arm. It starts with the scientific work to develop the vaccine. Then there's work to develop the infrastructure of health, clinics, trained people, even trucks that move vaccines that are cold around a country that's hot. And then when you get there in that clinic, you need somebody who not only can apply the vaccine, but can document it properly. Getting vaccines to the children who need them is no easy task, and the obstacles start with research and development. From the laboratory, to the clinical trials, to quality control, the development of a successful vaccine requires, on average, 12 years and millions of dollars before it can be mass-produced and distributed. When vaccines arrive in a country like Zambia, they must be distributed to individual clinics throughout the country by trucks, motorbikes, and bicycles, often over long distances and unpaved roads, even during bad weather and fuel shortages. We, as Mukushi District, we also have the hard-to-reach centers. The furthest health centers in the Luano Valley is about 315 kilometers. So it makes, very, very, makes us very difficult as a district to do the activities of child health effectively. Most vaccines that are used today need to be stored at refrigerator temperatures. That's pretty easy to achieve in a country like the United States, but in some countries, it's very difficult. You know, Zambia is a huge, huge, um, expansive uh, country, such that in certain places, you may not actually have, say, electricity. We make sure that we carry enough uh, ice packs so that we, we maintain the, co the, the cold chain. Just as it is difficult to move vaccines around Zambia, it can be a serious challenge for women to reach health facilities with their children, especially as many must travel by foot. We've got a huge geographical area with very few people in it. Um, the topography is difficult to navigate, the road infrastructure is lacking, um, and often people really don't have very regular or frequent contact with the health facilities. Transport is a Furthermore, a severe shortage of healthcare workers limits the health system's effectiveness. And of course, some of the health centers, the, 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 the staffing levels are very low. I would give an example of in MCH where I am. There are only three midwives against the entire population of Kanyama. 
say per day we do have 399 babies coming our way whom we have to give vaccines per day. All the services under one roof against the three midwives. In addition to addressing these challenges, increasing access to immunizations requires engaging communities. Misinformation and rumors can undermine trust in vaccines and keep parents from immunizing their children. Specifically, one might say, if the community is not itself a participant in these activities, there is no chance of succeeding. You know, public trust is difficult to gain, but it's very easy to lose and trying to rebuild it is a major challenge. It's really important that we pay attention to the community concerns and understandings as we roll out the new programs. Before we start the actual date for immunizations, we go around sensitizing our community. We use the megaphones, also we use the churches and our stakeholders to hold meetings so that when they go out, they give information to our mothers and the community at large. Zambia is also preparing for the introduction of new vaccines, which present new challenges. When, in fact, the health system struggles with existing interventions, to bring on new vaccines is an additional load. So as we introduce some of these new and good things, we need to also bear in mind that we are stretching further. A wide variety of international partners is helping Zambia on this range of challenges. At the center of these complex relationships is the Gavi Alliance, a global partnership that helps buy vaccines for disadvantaged populations. Yes, Gavi is what we call a public-private partnership, and it's been going for 10 years, and it was set up in the year 2000 with a specific mission of saving children's lives and improving people's health through increasing access to immunization, which of course is about the best value for money you can have. Conditions are attached to Gavi's assistance. For a country to receive vaccines from Gavi, its national income must be below a certain threshold, and it must make a co-payment and prove that it can meet the requirements of distributing vaccines. And this is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, it makes it a partnership, because if the governments and the countries themselves don't want the vaccines and don't value the vaccines, they're never going to be sustainable in those countries. Although the Zambian government has worked closely with Gavi and other international donors, there have been concerns about financial accountability in the health sector. Reports in 2010 suggested that the Zambian government mismanaged $8 million from the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB and malaria. Some of the donors have recently held back their support on account of governance issues. But our, the present government is moving very speedily to try and uh, iron out those issues and to ensure that uh, at no time do the donors have cause to think that they are misplacing and misallocating their resources. We accept responsibility for the core support of the programs, but also appreciate very much the support that we are getting uh, from our partners. Despite these challenges, and even in a tough global economic climate, immunization continues to draw high levels of international support. In June 2011, representatives of 20 countries joined foundations, UN agencies, and the private sector to raise money for the Gavi Alliance. The United States pledged $450 million over the next four years. The U.S. government approaches immunization both at a multilateral level and at a bilateral level. Um, at a technical level and at a policy level. So at the multilateral level, it very much is through organizations like WHO and UNICEF and, and Gavi as an alliance for all immunization partners. But we also think it's very important for us with our presence that, that the U.S. has on the ground to be working very closely on a bilateral basis to ensure that, that governments and other national stakeholders have the kind of support that they need. You know, there is really a question when we're facing such budget problems in the United States as to how we can be sure that we're getting what we want. The American people and Congress have shown that they want to save lives and they're particularly focused on children and mothers overseas. And if we can show that we can do so in a measurable way, the American people will be generous in supporting those efforts. We're so close to eradicating polio and we have a chance to 
reduce pneumonia, severe diarrhea, and even cancers like cervical cancer. I would say that um, there is no price for life. Children die because they have no access to a vaccine that costs five dollars a child. And I think that it is a, a small price to pay because then we have a healthier world and so we can in future focus on other problems, investment and development rather than battling disease for centuries.